Hey guys, welcome back. This is Snatcher, the second part of my little video series of Snatcher. Right now, we're going into the Big Corn, the headquarters of the Junker building. Or the headquarters of the Junkers, like it just said. Now, this is actually going to show some gameplay. Now, like I said, it's kind of like a point and click, but instead of point and click, it's all menu driven. Here we meet Mika. And you have an inner look investigate. Inner is kind of like moving, obviously. Look is look at something, investigation, or investigates to look more into something in detail. One thing I have to say, you have to uh, read in this game. If you play any RPG, you should be used to it, but reading is very important. It's part of the experience. It's one of those games where a lot of times you have to investigate stuff, but it's also one of those games you get you get as much back as you put into it. You have to put into this game, like clicking on stuff, looking at other stuff, you know, reading. But you don't have to look at every single thing in the whole game, but it's definitely worth it if you're interested in the story and stuff like that. This game also came out, it originally came out, I guess, for the MSX, and then there was the PC Engine CD version, which which is a lot like this version, the Sega CD has updated graphics and stuff like that. Some stuff was censored out of this, but all in all, this game isn't really that censored. I'm Gillian Seed. I've been assigned to Junker Headquarters effective today. Oh, you're Mr. Seed. Please forgive me. My name is Mika Slayton. I'm the administrative assistant and operator here at Junker Headquarters. Very pleased to meet you. There was a PlayStation and Sega Saturn version that only came out in Japan. I wish it came out here, but you really can't blame anybody because... A, this type of game doesn't really do well. Like, at least in the US. I don't know how it does well in other countries, but this game doesn't really... I guess appeal to a lot of people here. Second of all was in the Sega CD, so nobody bought it. Like, I got it for $15. This was probably $50 when it first came out. Um, but, at the same time, like, now it's worth a lot of money. Like, a lot of people are actually seeking out this game, which is a shame. Like, I think a game like this would actually do very well on the DS. Maybe if they ever come out with the virtual arcade for the 3DS, they would release this, but I don't know. I really, I think Earthbound has a better chance of getting some sort of American re-release than this, unfortunately, but that's why I'm kind of not too worried about spoilers. I want to show people this game, this video, and stuff like that, because this game is really awesome to me, and... Hopefully at least people will be able to see some of it. I don't know if I'll do the whole playthrough. I would like to. But I don't know how interesting it's going to be to see menu based system like text based systems like this. Mr. I don't know how well that translates Gillian's on video. Fine, you can call me Gillian Mika. Okay, Gillian. I'll open the main door but at the same time, the like, I would watch these videos, so maybe I'll do it, I don't know, but I want to show you at least a good chunk of this, and let me guys, excuse me, my speech is way off, like I said, I'm sedated from surgery, let, like, let me know what you guys think, like, would you be interested? I might show it anyway, but, I love comments and wonder what you guys think. Gillian Seed is here. I brought him in as you requested. Thanks for coming, Seed. I'm Benson Cunningham, the Chief of Junker Operations. Gillian Seed, I've been transferred here from the 17th Special Forces Division. I've heard all about your special training in the military, Seed. I hope you'll put it to good use on your new assignment here. By the way, I understand you're suffering from amnesia. Any sign yet that your memory's coming back? I'm afraid not. I still can't remember a thing from before the army picked me up three years ago. You're married, aren't you? Yes, but we're separated now. She has amnesia as well, and without any memories between the two of us, I'm afraid there was very little to base a good relationship on. 
I can see your point there. If I ever had a lot of money, like, instead of, like, messing with, like, all these popular franchises, like, if I could get a license for this and I could make the movie, like, I would definitely make this into, like, a video game movie, like, and I don't think, I think you'd have to change the dates and stuff like that, because anything in the future doesn't date well, because the future, like, when it comes to movies, is never, like, what the actual future would be like versus what you make in the movie so you probably have to change it to hate I'd almost go the Mega Man route and put like 20XX or something like that <laughs> I think this make a cool movie and if I ever could like if I ever got rich or whatever I'd pull a ooey bowl but I'd actually make a decent movie at least I think I would also um another I mean I don't think like they'd win an award or anything, but the acting in this in this game is actually surprisingly good for the time. Because most games that have any kind of voiceovers or stuff like that that came out were awful. These voices are actually really good. If they ever re-release this game, I'm sure they would change the cast. Unfortunately, but I would have loved to see the original cast do the voiceovers again. And there's actually a um a pseudo sequel and kind of a remake at the same time called Snatcher SD which in Japan is super deformed if you ever saw like those little midget those little little people with big heads sorry midgets kind of like a slur I apologize but um I didn't mean anything by it but um yeah it was like a RPG like Final Fantasy and it kind of had the story but it had it was kind of a little bit more tongue-in-cheek. I mean, this game's silly too at times, but more so than this. And, um, it was half-sequel too. I never actually got to play it. I would like to. Maybe if I get a chance, I'll make a video of it. But right now, like, I'm showing you guys this and try to focus on this one. Maybe I'll do a playthrough. I'm still debating while I'm actually recording, which is the worst time to debate, but oh well. This is kind of showing you the history of Junker, the rules, what your job is, which to me is really interesting. This game actually ended on a cliffhanger too, like there was going to be a sequel, but there was never, at least with Snatcher SD, I don't know how that game ended. That should be enough to but make this one ended on a cliffhanger. Junker quite clear. This is your Junker ID card. It will identify you as a Junker. Carrying it allows you to exercise your special authority. I see, sort of like a police officer's badge, huh? And, uh, here's some money. It's not much, but you'll need it to carry out your investigation. Cash? Credit cards aren't accepted in some regions of the city. You'll need this sooner or later. Sounds like it's a rough place out there. Go see Harry, the engineer. He's got your equipment. Well, like I said, it's sitting on a cliffhanger. I don't know what they were expecting a sequel. The timing when this game came out was awful, unfortunately. They had another game like this, which you might. There's a lot of reference of it, references of it in Metal Gear Solid, which was Police Knots, I believe. Yeah, and it was this kind of game. And Meryl from Metal Gear Solid was actually in it. She was actually in Police Knots for Metal Gear Solid. And he Kojima, Kojima liked the character so much he brought him brought her into um, metal the Metal Gear series, which was interesting. It's a pretty classy office. And here you just kind of get get an idea of, like what all the rooms are and stuff like that. You'll get to see these rooms more in depth as the game goes on. Which, which, I have to say, a lot of these rooms are kind of cool, but I'll elaborate that on other videos when it comes time. I don't want to give away all the secrets and 
stuff about this game before you actually see it. That's a Jordan. It's a big computer. Like in the future, I don't think computers will be that big. <laughs> Considering everything it's smaller, but that's the thing about when you release something that takes place in the future, you never know how it's going to be, so you make it up, and it's always completely different in reality than whatever the science fiction future was. Ray gun. I think they could have did better. They could have done better naming that. All right, this will give you a glimpse of like what an action scene was would be like in this game. It's a lot like it controls like this. Obviously, it won't look like this. It'll actually look like a shooting game. This game's um, was compatible with the Justifier, which um, if you ever played Lethal and Forcer and Arcade, you see the big baby blue gun re revolver and the pink revolver. Well, when it came out on consoles, it came with one. That was Konami's light gun. It's actually compatible with this. So if you think this is lame, you actually can use their light gun with it. Which I have tried, and I'd say it works pretty well. I have to say, like, when I used it, it made these parts more enjoyable. And like I said, the actual fighting is a lot different. It's, well, it's not different. It controls like that unless you use the light gun, but there's more strategy because it's actual like a video game like things recharge and move around and hop around and you shoot certain parts that make certain things happen like some of the enemies are weak in different areas but you'll see that as time goes on with these videos we get to meet Harry oh good Harry's back great to meet you you're a uh, Gillian Seed right haven't we met somewhere before no, I don't believe so. Really? Well, I guess I must be imagining things. I'm guessing that's supposed to be Madonna. A lot of people think it's Marilyn Monroe, but it, I think I'm pretty sure it's Madonna because Madonna went through that Marilyn Monroe phase. Harry was a lot cleaner cut as a kid. Little did he know he'd have a future like this. to introduce the navigator which I designed especially for you hey Metal Gear this get is out pretty here. interesting right here this obviously pays homage to the Metal Gear series if you never play Metal Gear Metal Gear is like a big walking mech tank that's able to shoot nuclear missiles Metal, introduce yourself yes sir Pleased to meet you, Gillian. I am Metal Gear Mach 2. I am programmed to be your personal assistant. What's cool is... Metal Gear? That's a pretty weird let name. And let them finish oh, talking. he's cute. Uh, thank you. I think he's turning red. I took his basic design and his name from the Metal Gear Menace of the late 20th century. But, uh, quite unlike that Metal Gear, this one was designed for... Anyway, as I was saying, um, which is super cool is... If any of you played Metal Gear Solid 4, you actually have a Metal Gear Mach 2, and that's exactly what this is. That was a straight reference of this game, Snatcher. It, not many people ever get that reference. I actually got super excited. Like, maybe they're trying to get interest in the Snatcher series. That, 
that was kind of naive on my part because obviously they haven't done anything like that but this is where Metal Gear Mach 2 is originally from and now Metal Gear Mach 2 is in the Metal Gear Solid 4 games. I don't know if Metal Gear Mach 2 is going to be in the new Metal Gear Rising. I'm curious how that game is going to be. It's a shame that Solid Snake's dead. I don't know how that series is going to turn out from now. I w oh, that's right. Uh, don't panic yourself. I got it right over here. This is your blaster, the official weapon of a junker. It's got full user feedback circuitry, adjusting itself to your reaction time. In other words, it's just as good as you are. What do you think? Here, see how she feels. It's unbelievably light. <laughs> you bet it is. This ain't one of those ray guns the army uses. She's put together with the latest carbon polymers and ceramics, not affected by heat one bit. And her ergonomic design optimizes both functionality and firepower. Well, what do you think, Gillian? So I'll this game... It. I think would do really good on the DS. I wish you could have that gun in Metal Gear. Or like, I think this game would be good like um, as a detective game, kind of like Heavy Rain. If they made it like that, I think that would work too. Like, there's a lot of ways I think that this game could be remade to to appeal to a modern audience. Video phone call from Jean-Jacques Gibson coming in. Connecting. Junker HQ, this is Gibson. I've cornered a probable male snatcher. I'm in the abandoned factory in the M district. Request immediate backup. Gillian, that means you. You better head out right away. Jean needs your help. We must hurry. We'll use a turbo cycle to travel to the scene. Be careful, Gillian. But yeah. This is a turbo cycle, specially designed for jumper use. In addition to three-wheeled ground travel, it is capable of hovering and high-speed flight. The vehicle is also VTOL capable, so takeoffs and landings in narrow areas present no difficulty. A flying tricycle, huh? I just came in on one of these things. We have been assigned this vehicle for use All in right, investigations. All right, sorry, I said yeah, and then I pause. But anyway, stay tuned for part three, where we go and investigate Gibson's whereabouts and continue further on on this case. And I'll talk more about how I feel like this should be a remade and stuff like that. So, I'll see you guys next time on part 3. If you like the video, please subscribe. And if you have, thanks for watching and subscribing. Alright guys, I'll see you later. Take care.